Welcome to the Agile community and our technical tips and tricks videos. My name is Sebastian Perisa, Director of Community and Senior Engineer. Today I will guide you through the process of how to use shared workplace on Agile OS. You might already have seen the other Tech Tip Tuesday video regarding the Active Directory login. What we are covering today is an additional topic, something that you might use instead of your Active Directory login. For one simple reason. Until now, you were used to assign profiles, settings to an endpoint, to a device, but not to a user. That's where shared workplace takes place. There, if you have the corresponding EMP Enterprise Management Pack subscription that you might already have in use for your ICG, Azure Cloud Gateway Connection, you can assign a profile to an Active Directory user or group that you import into the UMS. You don't have to do that on an endpoint anymore, but really on johnsmith at domain.com. That enables you to deploy user-based settings. Let's say that you have a user who has a visual impairment, a disease where he is not able to see some specific colors or he might need a higher resolution or a lower resolution. Or, speaking about the left and right-handed mouse issue, let's call it this way, you also have to switch on every device your behavior. That's something that you might not have to do anymore if you're using the shared workspace feature. So especially if you think about the call centers where you have a lot of people roaming around between different endpoints, between different devices. If you think of maybe production or productive areas where you have different shift workers working on the same device, but with different accounts, where you might also have user-based settings like keyboard language, that's something that chat workplace will make you a way easier to deploy. Now we are still speaking about devices inside of your company, but I already mentioned the Azure Cloud Gateway. Why should I say that if I'm speaking about an Active Directory like login? For one, again, simple reason. Let's imagine that you have a teleworker working from home and you might to make him available his Active Directory login instead of logging into the local Azure OS operating system. The first reason might be security, because you do not want to boot up UD Pocket or an Azure device and it boots directly into the desktop. And then someone might be able to start a session, even if he doesn't know the credentials. Second reason, you might want to use the Active Directory log information for a path through on certification for multiple session, like, let's say. That's also a way to uh, use this kind of information. The third one, which came to my mind also is, if you think of people who are working from home, but maybe or just in a small office without a VPN connection, and the person is leaving his workspace and didn't close or lock down the, uh, the session. If you leave your, and your workplace and your session is not locked out, it's definitely a security issue. That's something where also the Active Directory login is taking place over ICG, over Shared Workspace, which enables you to synchronize the local screen server password in specific cases with the Active Directory login. So you see the use cases for the Shared Workspace are huge. And if you're already using ICG, why not using that cool feature? Now let's dig into the configuration piece. Like in every tutorial, we are looking at the Universal Management Suite, also known as UMS. You might already have seen the other tutorial, which is covering the Active Directory logging from the endpoint perspective. Just to be clear, in that tutorial, I mentioned that for the purely Active Directory login process coming from the endpoint, you don't need to configure the Active Directory section of your UMS. That still is true. But if you want to use the Active Directory login through Shell Workspace, which is an absolutely different feature set, even if it looks similar, you have to set up that feature. Before starting into the configuration itself, please always check that you assigned invalid Enterprise Management Pack subscription to your endpoint. 
The reason is quite simple. You have to use the advanced feature set, which is included in the EMP for the shared workspace. If you don't have that, you can still use the Active Directory login, but not the shared workspace feature. Like we already discussed in the introduction, shared workspace is mostly related to a configuration that you want to roam between different devices. Now you might ask, yes, but if I have a UD pocket, do I still need that feature? Well, might be a good idea, yes. So you have covered the license. So the next step you have to achieve is to link your UMS with your Active Directory system. And enter the Active Directory domain where you want to log in. Click on Resolve if you want to list all the available domain controllers coming up from a network. In my case, I just have one. And then click Test Connection. I would recommend to use a different user than your administrative user, but in my case, I'm just using my standard one since I didn't install a separate user for that. And we should now get a connection successful. And here we go. So basically our LDAP connection is there. The Kerberos connection port isn't that bad. So we can confirm. So basically domain name, resolve, enter username, password, test connection just to be sure, then hit OK. As soon as you are set on that side, you can go back to your main UMS. And now if you didn't, just the thing I want to mention, disable that feature under your UMS feature, you should see now under your shared workplace users, your domain. And from there, you can browse to your users, or if you want to search for a specific filter pattern, you can also put it there. In my case, I have a pretty flat structure, so I know that I have a group or a couple of users that are inside that group, so I'm taking that user, which makes the things a little bit easier for me. And I will now assign to that specific user a profile. One thing that I want to mention here, because it's extremely important, not every setting that you see there is available inside of our shared workplace. For an example, you can always refer to our KB site, where every step is described. So basically things like a touch and configuration all the update settings themselves are not something that you can deploy via the shared workspace feature. But things like user specified wallpapers, specific session types, left or right handed mouses, maybe some visual handicap settings that you made to your endpoint that you want to roam with a user could be set there. So coming back to my profiles, I'm putting now a left-handed mouse profile onto that user. That means that every time that this user is logging into a device, which is covered by our shared workspace settings that we'll make in a couple of seconds, this user will keep his or her left hand mouse over every device without having the need to change it locally. So now that we made the backend configuration, let's make now the local endpoint configuration for the shared workspace feature. Go to security, to logon, to shared workplace, and please only activate the shared workspace feature. You don't need to set up your Active Directory Kerberos anymore. Everything is inside that settings. What I would recommend, by the way, is to skip the Agile Shell Workplace if the UMS server is not available. For a simple reason. Now every authentication try will be done through the UMS to your Active Directory. In the case where your UMS server might have an issue with network or database or whatever, your local users who are using Shared Workplace will not be able to log in anymore. That's the reason why we are always telling customers who are wanting to use that feature to have a high availability server 
cluster of our EMS servers in place. But even if that one wouldn't be covered, you could just keep the Azure Shell Workplace and log in with the local user, which is the standard user, which is opening up when you boot up the device. And basically, that's it. So now let's push the configuration to our test device, which is holding the EMP subscription. Let's take it effect now and let's move to the endpoint. So we are now switching back from the standard desktop, which is automatically logged in after every boot up, to a login dialog that you might already know from the Active Directory once and which looks pretty similar, even if it's not exactly the same. So let's try now to log in with my Active Directory user. And let's see if our login process is bringing us to the local desktop. It is. So you don't notice a big difference here because I didn't assign any kind of other profiles, but I could now check in the local configuration in the Azure setup if the left-handed mouse setting reached the device. Let's go to user interface. Go to the input and mouse setting. And we now see that the left-handed mouse reached out to my device. So let's go back. And just have to remember that it is a left-handed mouse by clicking with a right click. Let's log off now. And let's log in with another user, which is my demo user number two. My expectation would be now that my device is still a right-handed device. So let's take the login process happening. Let me open my just setup, but I'm already not a thing that I'm clicking with a left click. So it should be what we expect. So that's the main positive map pin for the shared workplace to keep local user settings coming from your Active Directory login over all the devices where you might roam during a day. There are also some other use cases, but that's the main one I would to point out. And left right-handed mouse might be the less common use case for that. But let's think about um, healthcare places where you don't have the ability to use uh, specific third-party software like in Privata. That could be a first approach to make a local user-based configuration. So now let's come back to the OMS and maybe describe a few things which might be interesting for you and specific on the shared workplace feature. If you go to your user, where we assigned the setting just before, so the Citrix Demo 01, and we just check which kind of configuration we assigned here, you might be interested in, in see which object is assigned from the profile view. Or from the endpoint, check how the configuration is acting for the moment. So we see here our keyboard, but we don't see our mouse setting. Next one is to check all the assignment that you made, because it can be quite complicated to keep an overview about all the groups or users where you added a profile to and check which kind of account received which setting. In that specific case, you could also check, hey, how is user configuration of that user look like if she or he would log in into a specific account of an endpoint? So that's basically the configuration that I would like to double check when it comes to my left-handed mouse. Is there maybe also a profile that is overriding that setting in another section? Oh, here we go. So we have now our left-handed mouse. That's the way how I'm checking, if I'm knowing that the user is using the shared WordPress user, how the configuration is look like as soon as he logs in on the device. And last but not least, since this feature isn't that well known, 
Assuming that you already have an ICG because you might already have set it up because you have an EMP subscription going on. Theoretically, let's imagine your endpoint is somewhere in the teleworker situation and you would like to have your user logging in into the Active Directory before starting his desktop or her desktop. That's a feature that you could use even through ICG. It's not possible if you use the standard Active Directory login mechanism that we have seen in another tutorial, but you can still use Active Directory login through the Shared Workplace feature. So let me set up that in a couple of seconds. So now let me check if I can log in. Connection ready. So my device is now registering through ICG to my UMS and from there we should get the Shared Workplace feature activated in a couple of seconds. So apparently the device went through the ICG registration process quite well. Let me jump back to the device now, which should be connected to my ICG and not to my UMS anymore. And let's start to log in. So basically with any kind of VPN or direct connection from my endpoint to the Active Directory, I should not be able to log in with my Active Directory login information. To the standard ICG connection channel. Here we go, and basically I can already tell you that I have my left-handed mouse now assigned via CG to my endpoint by using the shared workplace feature. So that's my approach how to use the shared workplace in a standard and easy way coming from the UMS. Thank you for joining our technical video session. All links mentioned in this session are available in the show notes section of this video. You will find more technical content and other videos on agilecommunity.com and agileacademylearn.agile.com.